CSS Grid is kind of hard to visualize because we're we're essentially making these things called columns and tracks and rows and gaps, and they're not elements in themselves like most things else in in HTML. We're able to inspect element and change the color of it or add a border. But with CSS Grid, we're we're making these things that are sort of untouchable. So uh, what we need to do is use Dev Tools in order to to get a better idea of what's actually going on. So open up 04 Dev Tools, and I've got the starter files open up in here. And this is just our standard div with a class container. We got our 10 items in here, and I went ahead and displayed grid on the container. Now, what I want you to do is to uh, inspect element. And in your Firefox dev tools, you are going to see a tab here called layout. It doesn't matter which item you've actually selected, but uh, actually you can click on the container. You can see that there's this little grid here. Um, and you can either click that, and that will turn on and off the grid highlighting, or you can go over to the Layout tab, and you see that it will automatically compile all of the different grids that are in here. Now, again, the, oh, the one that we have here is the container. The only reason all these other items are showing up is because I've also displayed grid them in our base CSS. So no need to worry about those just for now. Now what we can do is go ahead and turn on the visual grid that we have there. And uh, you'll see right away that we've got some lines overlapping on top of our grid. And this is going to help us understand where the tracks are, where the columns are, where all the different rows are. Now, there's a couple settings that we can have here. We can first turn on the line numbers, and you'll likely always want to have those on because when we get into placing items, that's going to be really helpful. Uh, area names, you can turn that on or off. We don't have any area names yet. We're going to be learning that in coming videos. And then finally, you can extend the lines in indefinitely. So. Uh, if you want to st extend them way off. Sometimes they're a little bit hard to see um, over top of what you've got. And you can change the color of the items here. Just click on that. I found that if you make them black, that's the easiest to see in all types of color. Obviously, unless your grid is black, you can change it up. Um, one other little tip that I found in order to, to be able to see them, especially when we get into what did these mean, is I turn on the uh, OS X accessibility zooming. So I can just do zoom in and out, woo, zoom in and out nice and quick like that. Good. So let's actually go ahead and start making some columns. We'll leave this open and we'll sort of see how it adjusts in real time. So let's go and make some uh, columns first. You can see that we really only have one column. So say grid template column and we'll have 100 pixels and 200 pixels and see what we've got there. Good. So now you see that we have our first column, our second column and all of our rows are automatically being put in there. So first of all, one thing we need to know is that how come that we see three? Well, you need to know that the columns and our rows, which are collectively referred to, what are they called? Tracks. They're all called tracks. Tracks are numbered not by the actual column itself, but by the lines that start and stop them. So for, you're always going to have one more number than you actually do column or row. So we can start at one, go to two, and go to three. Now you'll see that we have a bunch of actual different types of dots and lines and solid lines showing up here. And actually, if we add some grid gap of 20px, you'll see that we also have it. So what, what do these values actually mean? It's going to be helpful to sort of hold these values in our head. Well, I made you another really nice diagram. If you open up today, there's going to be line meetings.png. Open that up. And you're going to see that the solid line, what that means is that that is the start and the stop of the explicit grid. And we, we don't know what that means yet, but we're going to be doing it in just a second. The Obviously, the dashed um, diagonal lines mean the gap. The dashed lines means that it is an explicit track. So if I zoom really close in here, um, you see that these dark dashed lines are going vertically. And that's because we have explicitly created an actual column, right? Because we recreated a column here and we said one will be 100, one will be 200. So the fact that they are dark dashed lines shows us that we made those. On the flip side, we didn't create any type of rows here. They've all been created themselves. So if we zoom right in, you'll see that they are uh, dotted. So I, I like to call these long ones dashed and these square ones dotted. 
and you'll see that they're a little bit more faint, they're a little bit see-through, and that means that they are implicit. Again, we'll go more into this, but that means that they have been created without us saying so uh, because the browser has created them. So we'll come back to that quite a bit more, but it's helpful to know that all of these lines do mean something and having them open in your dev tools is going to be very helpful. So that's it for now. Let's jump into the next video, which is actually understanding the explicit and the implicit tracks in Grid.